Good hello my sweet friends and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be doing a book haul. This book haul is going to be about 50% physical books and 50% audible books that I purchased myself through Audible. I don't necessarily want to haul all of the audiobooks I have on my library right now and I mean you all know that I have Scribd so I can't really haul every single book on Scribd but what I did do this month was I bought myself a couple of extra Audible credits because there were a few Audible exclusives that I wanted to get so that I could have a whole bunch of books to listen to. So we're gonna haul a bunch of physical books and then we are going to talk about all of the audiobooks that I have and then I also have a couple of physical books on the way that just haven't shown up yet and I'm gonna talk about those as well. This is pretty much exclusively an entire, no it's 100% exclusively an entire science fiction and fantasy book haul. They're all science fiction and fantasy books and some of them are books that you guys have wanted me to read for a very long time. So the first book that I'm going to talk about is Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. This book I have heard only good things about. It's from what I understand it is lesbian necromancers in space. I'm sorry. What? That's just such a fascinating concept to me and it's not a concept that I've seen pretty much in any other books before. Like that's a marriage of science fiction and fantasy and LGBTQ that like is so amazing. I don't really know much about the plot but I'm keeping it that way. I don't want to know much about the plot. I mostly just want to know kind of what's going on, how this book is gonna like what the the selling points are which are lesbian necromancers in space and yeah I'm just really excited. Cover absolutely badass. I'm excited to see what these characters are about and what kind of book Muir has written and it seems so unique and I'm hoping it's really stand out like it seems like it will be. Then I got what is basically the Ancestor Trilogy by Mark Lawrence. I got Red Sister, Holy Sister, and then the one in the middle. I forget what it's called right now but I ordered all three at the same time. I have heard nothing but good things about this series. From what I understand it's basically like a convent like nuns except instead of training them to be nuns they train them to be assassins. That is super cool. So I've heard nothing but good things about this series. The books are relatively short and I just kind of want to know what Nona's character is all about. I know the main character's name is Nona because I did read the blurb for the first one but I haven't read the blurb for the third one so I'm gonna just do that before I accidentally read the blurb. The first book seems like it's kind of about Nona's education in becoming an assassin and how she handles like the schooling to become an assassin which sometimes I don't necessarily enjoy like school-based assassin training books but I've heard so many good things about this series that I'm willing to give it a shot. I kind of wish that there was like an assassin book where I didn't have to you know read an entire book about them being educated in how to become an assassin and they're already just a badass assassin by the time the book starts but it's fine. I'm sure this is a great book and I've heard like I said I've heard nothing but good things about this series so I got all three books in this series. I'm excited to read them. It's definitely gonna be fast reads for me because they are so small like in comparison to some of the books I've been reading this year like they're teeny tiny itty bitty baby books so I will definitely be able to blast through this series. I've been in a fantasy mood for the last few months but I'm like transitioning into a science fiction mood so this might have to wait until I'm back into a fantasy mood but I flip flop like it really depends and I've been kind of pushing through my moods to read specific books lately like I'm definitely in a science fiction mood right now but I'm reading The Well of Ascension so I don't know we'll see. I definitely want to read this in 2020 and uh, yeah I've heard nothing but good things and I will probably post maybe like would you guys like to see a standalone review of this? I don't know what you guys want to see standalone reviews of on this channel. If you can let me know what kind of books you want to see standalone reviews of that would be great because I'm really bad at like determining what kinds of books you guys want to see standalone reviews for. Maybe I'll just start doing a whole ton more in general. I digress. Heard really great things. Excited to read this. The next three books are, oh god, what have I done? What am I doing? Um, it's The Eye of the World, The Great Hunt, and Dragon Reborn. The first three books in the Wheel of Time series by Robert Jordan. 
Um, so a few months ago, month or two, I posted uh, that I was doing my year of Sanderson, that I'm going to be reading every single Brandon Sanderson book in 2020 that, you know, I can kind of get my hands on. I don't really want to read his YA ones that look like explosions on the cover, but I am going to read Skyward and Starsight. I digress. Read all of those. And if you go to the comments on that video, there's a lot of people saying that um, they're reading The Wheel of Time, or I need to read The Wheel of Time, or Brandon Sanderson wrote The End of the Wheel of Time, and I know that, and I guess I'm gonna talk about it now, but <laughs> I planned on reading all of Brandon Sanderson's books this year, and then reading Wheel of Time once I finished all of Brandon Sanderson's books, like once I finished Stormlight Archive for The Rhythm of War. And <laughs> so I just kind of figured that I would get them now, because um, I've like whipped through a lot of Sanderson. I'm like halfway through the Well of Ascension. After that, I just have to read Hero of Ages, Alloy of Law, five and six of the Mistborn series, Bands of Mourning and Shadows of Self or whatever they're called. Um, then I have to read Warbreaker and Elantris and that's it. I've gotten the big guys over with. So I may very well finish those well before Rhythm of War comes out. So I may be able to start on Wheel of Time this year. So I decided to pick up the first three so that I'm prepared and ready for when I want to start reading the Wheel of Time series. I feel like it's just kind of a thing that I have to do as someone who consumes a lot of science fiction and fantasy. Gotta read the Wheel of Time. I've heard nothing but good things. Like it's iconic for a reason. It's famous for a reason. Everybody says amazing things about it. So I need to read it. So I'm gonna read it. So I bought the first three. I bought the I don't know what edition it was, but they're technically mass market paperbacks, but they've got like really crisp, clean, minimalist covers. Kind of have all of these on my wish list, and I'm hoping that like my family gets me like four, five, and six, and seven, eight, and nine for Christmas or something so that I don't have to like spend $200 on the Wheel of Time books. But yeah, so that kind of like, hopefully that like explains to you guys where my head's at about Wheel of Time. It's not that I'm not going to read it. I am definitely going to read it. It's that I wanted to read Sanderson first and then get into the Wheel of Time because the Stormlight Archive was just something that I really wanted to read. Um, you guys will hear more about my thoughts on Oathbringer at the end of this month. Yeah, so I have um, decided to get the first three Wheel of Time books and that's that on that. Coming in the mail. So those are all the books that have already come in the mail. I got two Robert Jackson Bennett books. Um, the first one was City of Miracles, which is the third book in a series that I haven't started yet, but I have the first two. I have City of Stairs and City of Blades right there and I needed City of Miracles. And I'm kind of like the person who's like, if I want to read a whole series, especially if the books are relatively short, I want to have the whole series with me. So I decided to buy City of Miracles because I noticed that it was finally on paperback. So I'm going to read that soon. And I'm going to read that soon. Then I also bought Foundry Side by Robert Jackson Bennett. Um, I heard a couple of YouTubers talk about this and the way that it was described is kind of like a fantasy novel that also transcends into science fiction territory, which is something that I am very into. The um, Broken Earth trilogy is kind of like that by um, N.K. Jemisin, so like the fifth season. I don't know too much about the plot of Foundry Side, but I do know that it is the beginning of a new series. It is kind of like fantasy that dips its toes into science fiction, you know, from what I've heard. And I've heard nothing but good things from people that I trust. My friend Sam also read this and she really liked it. And and I've just heard really good things and I'm constantly on the lookout for new series that I will enjoy. So I'm really excited to read it. The cover was beautiful and however much people want to try and say that you don't buy books based on the cover, you're a liar. People who like books will buy books based on how nice the cover is sometimes. It's an occasional thing that I do. Often I will buy books based on like 99% of the time I will buy books based on like the fact that I want to read them. But like once in a blue moon, I'll hear a couple of good things about a book and then I'll see the cover and I'll be like, you know what? I need that in my life. And that's how it is with Foundry Side. I've heard a good couple of good things from a few booktubers and the cover is beautiful and it just kind of seems like something that would like be in my wheelhouse. So I'm excited to read it. That's the tea on that. I don't know anything about it. You know, like I have trouble with hauls because 
that a lot of times I don't like to know the entire synopsis of a book before I read it, but then I also want to know the synopsis for you guys. So I hope you're okay with me going in blind to some books. Yeah, I just don't want to know what it's about. Like this Foundry Side book, I don't want to know what it's about. It just seems interesting. It seems like something I would like and I'm excited to read it. Let's talk about audiobooks that I purchased from Audible. You guys know that I'm a huge audiobook fan. Um, I did like my favorite audiobooks of 2019 as a video and I am just a massive fan of audiobooks. I've been doing Audible, you know, off and on for a few years. You know, if Audible ever wanted to sponsor me, that would be sick, but this isn't sponsored tragically. So I really love audiobooks. I get a lot of audiobooks from Libby. If I don't have to buy it, I won't. And I like to support my libraries. So I get the majority of my audiobooks from Libby, but there are some that are exclusive to Audible or that I can't get on Libby when I want to read them. So I do have a tendency to buy Audible exclusives. It's just a thing that I do. So books that I bought. The first two that I wanted to talk about are Skyward and Star Sight by Brandon Sanderson. These are science fiction books. I think they're technically young adult. Didn't know that when I bought them, but I think they're technically young adult. Not that young adult is bad. It's just I've been reading so much adult that I can really tell the difference between adult and young adult books. Again, not that it's bad. It's just I don't know. I thought it was adult when I first read it. That being said, Skyward has been so good so far. It's about a young woman whose father is basically disgraced from, you know, a pilot army. Humans are on the run from some alien races and she joins up with to become a pilot. And that's all I know so far. I'm like 50% of the way through. So it's kind of like a pilot education book, the first book. I don't know what Star Sight the second book is about, but the first one is about our main character learning how to become a pilot. So that's kind of what the first one is about, which is kind of why I'm like, ooh, do I want to read Red Sister right now? Because that's a lot of uh, like training education books in a row. And it's not that I hate that trope. It's just that I don't love that trope. So I bought those two audiobooks, And then I also got The Dragon Republic by R.F. Kuang. You guys know that last year I really enjoyed The Poppy War. Um, I had my gripes with The Poppy War, especially with like pacing between like the first, second, and third parts of the book. Pacing was definitely off in The Poppy War, but overall I really did enjoy The Poppy War as a book and I'm excited to see what R.F. Kuang does with the remainder of the series. That being said, Dragon Republic audiobook was not on script and it was not at my library. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna buy it on Audible because I do wanna read The Dragon Republic Republic before the third book comes out. So I got the Dragon Republic as well. I'm not going to talk about the plot because if I talk about the plot, I have like, I can't talk about the plot of the Dragon Republic without spoiling the plot of the Poppy War. If you like a really, really, really dark fantasy world, like I'm talking dark, like I'm talking dark, dark, like I'm talking darker than the Broken Earth trilogy, probably one of the darkest books that I've ever read. You'd probably really enjoy the Poppy War, but just be aware that there are like trigger warnings for basically everything like everything. Then I got The Shadow of What Was Lost by James Islington. Again, this is a fantasy series that I've heard a lot of good things about. The first one was an Audible exclusive. I have heard, you know, actually, you know what? I've heard mixed things about The Shadow of What Was Lost, but overall I've heard a lot of good things. This is like the beginning of a fantasy epic. This is also one of those books that I don't know a ton about before going into it. I just know that it is a fantasy novel. It is a fantasy epic. It's a 25 hour audiobook, which is like nothing compared to the Stormlight Archive. But you know, I used to think that a 25 hour audiobook was long. And then I read Oathbringer, 53 hours. Wowie zowie, that was a long audiobook, but it was worth it. So I've heard a lot of good things about The Shadow of What Was Lost. I don't know exactly what it's about, but I don't want want to know what it's about prior to going into it. I want to be surprised. I want to kind of enjoy it having not really known what it's about. So I bought that audiobook on Audible. The last book that I got was The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin. I wanted to buy it because I love N.K. Jemisin. My library didn't have it, Scrib didn't have it, and I want to read it because I love N.K. Jemisin. So I bought The City We Became. So basically the city we became is like, it's, it's the beginning of a series and basically every city has souls and a city like New York has five souls which represent the five boroughs and apparently 
according to the synopsis, those souls have to come together to save the world. And I just think that's a really fascinating concept. It's not something that's really been explored in novels before. People talk about cities, especially like New York, having a soul and having their, you know, own like personalities. And I think it's going to be really interesting to see like the five boroughs in New York like personified into people. I just think it's gonna be fascinating. And I love N.K. Jemisin's work. I obviously love the Broken Earth trilogy. I wanna get started on the Inheritance trilogy soon. And obviously I want to read this new Great Cities series as it comes out. Uh, I think I'm gonna do a review on this one because it is more recent and it is the beginning of a series. So it's not something like if I like you know, did a review of the obelisk gate, like you would obviously not necessarily want to watch it, watch it if you haven't read the fifth season. So yeah, I think I'm going to do a review on that one when I read it. Again, I've, I love N.K. Jemisin. So I'm really excited to read this one. And that's that on that. That is the last audiobook that I purchased from Audible. So that is it for my haul. Let me know in the comments down below what books you have purchased lately. Have you read any of the books that I talked about in this video? In a spoiler free way, let me know what you thought of it and whether you think I will like it. Um, and have you hauled any books lately? What's the favorite book? Like what is a book that you are most looking forward to that you have like gotten recently, whether it's from a library or purchased? Don't forget I have all of my social media linked in the down bar so you can follow me there if you would like. And that is everything from me for today. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye! Great job.